But it, the thing is that those two aren't mutually exclusive, right? You can make skilled people feel good while also allowing new people to have fun because you give them more of a chance to compete against the skilled people. You get what I mean? It's like those people who've been playing fighting games for years have the fundamentals locked down in their brain, right? But because of that, they're able to do better. Whereas people who are coming in are barely learning the fundamentals, but because they don't have to worry too much about the complicated inputs, they just know that if I put this move here in this string, it'll be better. And then from there, those people can then move on to wanting to learn inputs and then can, you know, learn the fundamentals when it comes to most fighting games. So, so it's like, it's like a win-win regardless, you know? Uh, mechanical complexity only comes forward when people who have experience with these games are able to break the game open and show you that mechanical complexity but also allowing it to be simple and approachable while remaining a level of complexity is the key and the balance that's hard to find in fighting games i think this game is definitely bridging that gap in a good way and i think guilty gear strive tried to bridge that gap in a good way as well but guilty gear is still very hard to get in at the higher level you know or to 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 get to that higher level i think there is definitely a ceiling that is very very difficult to break through and most people probably stop before they ever before they ever, ever even make a crack in that ceiling you know what i mean um that's not to dissuade people from wanting to you know just play this game casually you know because a lot of the times i mostly play fighting games casually but i do in a sense want to get back into being more of a competitive player and wanting to get better and improve myself I'm very hard on myself in general when it comes to a lot of things, when it comes to my art, to, to the things that I make and whatnot, and even to, in fighting games, my skills in fighting games, like I, I will harp on myself a lot, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I want to give up. It just means that I know that I have room to grow and I'm making simple mistakes that I should know better about, right? But it comes with, you know, anything you do in life. As, as a human being, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to drop your input. You're going to forget that you can add to the string. You're going to forget that you're you know, minus on that move and they have the advantage, right? You're going to forget these things. It's always going to happen. And you shouldn't beat yourself up about it. You know, you shouldn't tell yourself, oh, I'm never going to get better because of it. I had this idea where I was going to talk. I, I, well, what was this video idea? And maybe, you know, I'm still going to do it. But I wanted to talk about the, the, the similarities between fighting games and art, right? They go very hand in hand and any discipline, really. In art, what you're doing is you're essentially doing the same thing over and over again until you get better at it. But you're not just doing it blindly. When you draw something and you realize, oh, I'm not too good at drawing this thing, you look up, how do I draw this thing? An arm, a leg, a head, different angles, a hand, for example, the hardest thing for an artist to draw. You draw the hand over and over and over again, but you're not really learning anything if you're just doing the same motion over and over again. You need to realize what it is about that thing that makes it difficult for you to draw, a tackle that, and then improve in those aspects, right? Fighting games is very similar. You're blocking, you're doing all these things, you're 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 doing motion inputs, you're learning your Hadoukens, your Shoryukens, and all that stuff. But what does it matter if you're not actually applying it in a smart way or, or absorbing that knowledge in a smart way and you're more or less just, you know, you're more or less just doing the same motion over and over and over again. It's like, yeah, it's good muscle memory, but you're not learning anything. You're just in, in, like putting it, you're just putting that motion in your head. But how do you apply it? How do you apply it in the middle of a fight? How do you go into a fight and say, OK, I learned this combo string. When do I use it? Because a lot of the times these games will teach you these complicated combo strings, but they won't tell you where to apply it. And so you're going to spend the entire match trying to pull off a complicated combo string in the most unsafe environment because you just want to pull it off and think that that's enough to win. No, you need to learn when it's time to do that, when it's time to just sit back and jab, when it's time to just hold back, let the person do their thing, then counter, right? You need to learn all these things and apply them in a smart way. The same way with art. You need to learn what you did when it comes to to drawing a hand when you're drawing a complex hand form in art. It's like you do that hand over and over again. OK, so why are you struggling when it comes to doing the actual artwork of drawing the hand in the piece? Well, it's because you're not applying what you've learned through drawing the hand. You just did the same motion over and over again. Now, break down what you did when you were doing that thing over and over again and do it piece by piece and apply it here. When should you use this knowledge? That's the important thing. 
when what should you absorb when you're learning and what is just useless and will not help you in the long run these are two things that go hand in hand when it comes to fighting games and when it comes to art you know and that's why i love both so much i like to draw because i like the feeling of creating something and knowing that i improved to a point that i created something that i'm proud of same in fighting games where i get to a point where i'm doing these more complex combo strings while at the same time applying my fundamentals holding the back button until i know i'm safe and not doing stupid shit you know it's about learning smart and effectively and applying those things in the proper situations you know and it's very easy to get lost in that when you're in the moment it's very easy to get frustrated with a piece of art because you're trying to do the same thing over and over again you find that you're trying to draw this leg for an hour straight right or you're stuck in the same loop of losing and winning for an hour straight instead of doing consecutive wins right and it's about taking a step back when you're in that mode and being like okay i'm gonna take a break i'm gonna take a breather and i'm gonna figure out what am i doing wrong or why do i keep messing this up or why isn't it clicking right and you take the knowledge that you have because it's in there you absorb that knowledge now all you got to do is apply it in a smart way and i think it's hard to do that when you're tilted when you're angry when you're frustrated because you're just thinking to yourself, why do I suck? Why do I keep sucking? Why can't I be better? But it's not as simple as that. It's you having to go deep into your head and figure out, okay, I don't suck. I'm just not applying the things that I learned properly. Now, how do I do that? You know? You're not gonna get anywhere by just telling yourself you're bad. You're bad right now. Maybe you're bad at the start of it. Maybe you're not as good as everyone else, but this doesn't mean that you don't have room to grow, you know? And I think that's the key. Yeah, exactly. It's talent versus skill. Talent is a stupid word, and I've always hated it. There is no such thing as talent in my brain, right? Other people would say otherwise, but to me, to me, the idea is talent is what people describe a skill that they are not familiar with, whereas somebody who is already within that skill set would tell you, no, I didn't get good overnight. It took me years and years of practice to get where I'm at, right? When it comes with me and art and all that stuff, it's like, it's, it's, it, it, it's stuff that I've applied. And that's why when people come in and be like, oh, I'm bad at drawing. I'm like, so was I. When I first started off, I drew stick figures and not even good ones. Right. But I would learn, like, you know how I learned how to draw better. And I talk about this in a bunch of streams. I learned by literally fucking pausing episodes of Naruto and drawing the characters on my TV screen or on my computer screen over and over, I would copy it. And then over time, I realized that the things that I would use in copying, I could apply them to actual original artworks. Or I would draw Sonic the Hedgehog over and over and over again until I got really good at drawing Sonic the Hedgehog. And I would apply the things I learned when drawing Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, into my actual art. And I could go back and I honestly say like, yeah, I'm good at drawing today because I learned how to draw a Sonic OCs when I was a kid. And that's what it is, right? And the same with fighting games. I've been playing fighting games all my life. And I applied a lot of the fundamentals that I learned in early Street Fighter, early Marvel vs. Capcom, early King of Fighters, into what I know now. And it helps. I may not be the best, but that's because I haven't practiced, you know? But with more practice, it comes back. It stays in your head. It lingers. And you, you get better, you know? Having a defeatist attitude about everything will only let you, you know let you stay in that same place you're at. In order to move forward, you need to take away that defeatist attitude and you need to tell yourself, I can get better. Maybe not today, but over time I can. Tomorrow, next week, next year, I'm gonna improve if I keep doing this. I'm not just punching a wall and expecting the same outcome, no. I'm gonna climb over that wall and I, eventually I'll reach the top of it, I'll get over it, and I'll keep moving until I reach another wall and climb over that one. It's about never having an end to that journey, you know? And it's about always realizing that there's always room for improvement. There's always going to be a wall, and there's always going to be an opportunity to climb over it. And if you just sit there and say, oh, well, the wall's too high, then you're going to stay there, of course. But if you keep trying, you're going to climb that wall. And that's the important thing. Don't let that be the thing that stops you. Don't let yourself be the thing that stops you because that wall's there. It's not saying anything to you. You're the one who's telling yourself you can't climb over that wall. You just have to. You have to have the mindset that you're going to grow and then you will. 
And I know it's one of those things of, hey, just be positive, forehead, but it's not even that. It's like, you can be in a negative space and still think, I can grow from this, I can grow from this, you know? But that's my advice to anyone coming into fighting games or anybody who, you know, sees them as this big hurdle or like these inaccessible things. It's like everyone was there when they started. We didn't get better overnight. This is just years of experience and you can get there too. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but over time. And if you have fun doing it, that's the most important part. If you don't have fun doing it, you don't have to do it. You don't have to keep trying to climb that wall. If you see that there's something more exciting in the other direction, then go there. You don't have to be frustrated with it. But if you find that at some point you want to come back and try to climb over that wall and to get better, then go for it. But don't just give up halfway, you know, and, and, and tell yourself you'll never get better. It's not about how fast you get there. It's about the climb. So keep that in mind. And like I said, it applies to art as well. Art is always going to be this complex saying that takes years to master. But if you have fun with just your dumb little doodles, then keep doing it. It doesn't matter if you're not as good as like the, the, the great artists of our time. It's not it's not like you're not going to be like like uh, Lack or like Bengus or or like Kinu Nishimura right over overnight. You know, it's like, it takes time. <laughs> you're going to get there. And you're going to get there in your own way. And that's what matters. And that's like my mindset when it comes to fighting games, to art, to anything in life. And you can apply it there. It's okay to take a break. But don't give up. <laughs>